Hello everyone. So in this video, I'll show how you can import custom props and other models into Source 2. This covers things like static props, like furniture, as well as skeletal models like characters or vehicles with some basic moving parts. So let's say you found a 3D model you want, like this nice free lantern from Polyhaven. The only real custom file type you can import are FBX files, and thankfully they offer a direct download for that here. If the model you want isn't an FBX, like say it's an OBJ or a, a DAE or something, you'll have to import it into a model editor like Blender and simply re-export that as an FBX file. Then we'll need to put the model and texture files into the Half-Life Alex add-on content models folder. So for simplicity, it's best to keep all the models and texture files together in one folder and try to keep the names and the folders organized so you can easily find them when you search for it in SFM later. So here's the lantern folder with all the assets we need. We can go ahead and open up the model doc editor. And by default, the favorite list has the add meshes button in it. So if we click that, we can then go and find our lantern.fbx. Nothing will show yet until we hit the compile button. And this will ask where you want to save the Source 2 model, so let's just go and put that next to the original FBX and name it something simple to find. Also, make sure you avoid capital letters and spaces when naming files or folders because this can cause issues later on. Once that's saved, the model will be compiled and it will show up as this beautiful red wireframe. The red wireframe simply means that the model has no materials applied to it. So let's go to add search for material and select default material group. This will show all of the materials assigned to the parts of the model. So in this case, there's a material for the body and a separate material for the glass. Now, before we can add those materials to the model, we'll need to create them. So let's go to the material editor, hit new, and we'll save this material next to the model file again. Now that we've created this blank material, we can go back to the model doc and assign it to the model. And if we compile it again, the model will now be using it. We'll deal with the glass later. Back in the material editor, we can select the model preview and open up our lantern. This is optional, but it helps us to see how the material will look when it's on the model. You can also change the lighting preview so you can see how the material looks under different lighting conditions. So by default, when you create new materials, they'll be set to the simple shader. I usually prefer to switch to the VR complex because it offers a lot more control and some fancy features. So with the complex shader, let's go and enable specular. And since this is a metal lantern with a metalness texture, let's enable the metalness texture box. So now we can add the diffuse color texture. You might also have a lot of clutter and similarly named textures, so thankfully you can filter things out and remove them from the search with commands like minus, wood. Anything with minus in front of it will be removed from the search. And to speed things up, we can copy this search and paste it in later. Here's our diffuse texture. Now, depending on the size of the texture and your PC speed, this might take a while to load in. So this is a 4K texture and it takes about 10 to 15 seconds to load on my PC. But there we go, our color is applied. Now let's do the same for the normal map. This adds the bumpy texture to it. And the roughness. This basically defines which parts are smooth and shiny and which parts are rough and less shiny. And finally, the metalness. Metalness basically defines how much white light or diffuse color will be reflected by the material. And there's our beautiful lantern. We can change the lighting to see how it looks in different conditions, but that looks pretty much good to go. So now let's go to save as and make a duplicate of this material for the glass. For this one, we'll enable the translucency and this will bring up a new translucency selection box. So let's grab the opacity map. With that done, we can now go back to the model dock and assign that to the glass material. Hit compile and bam, there's our fully textured model. 
If everything looks good, we can go to the material editor and hit save or save all and compile everything together. And now if we search for lantern in the asset list, there it is. And we can throw this into SFM. Now, depending on how the model was made, the scale might be wrong compared to other models in your scene. You could simply right click and add scale controls to the model and adjust it in the scene. But for a more permanent solution, let's reopen the model in the model dock, select the FBX mesh file and change the import scale. So 0.75 looks about right for this one. And that's our lantern. Now the process is pretty much the same for porting characters or models from other games. If the model already has animations, you can also export those as an FBX file. And then in model doc, you can add an anim file. Select the FBX and hit compile and it will be added to the character's animation sequences. So if we load the character into SFM and click Import Sequences, you'll see all the imported animation files. Now let's say you have a model that you want to split into several parts, like this coffee cart. We can do this using body groups. Some models like this will be split into several meshes. So if we select the FBX here, we can see it has a bottom cart and the props on top as separate meshes. We can toggle those on and off, but that's not very useful right now. Instead, let's duplicate the model with Control and D. And we'll call this one Cart. And hide the Props mesh on top. And we'll call the other one Props and hide the bottom Cart mesh. Now let's add a Body Group. And we'll call this Cart. Duplicate the body group and we'll call that props. Now we can right click the body group and add a choice. Also do this for the props body group. And in each choice, we'll select the mesh that we want to appear. And we can compile this. So now if we import this model into SFM and right click it, you'll see we now have body groups that can be toggled on and off. This is extremely useful if you have larger props with smaller pieces or characters with different equipment or clothes. Now, what if you want to switch between different materials or colors on a model? We can do this with material groups. Let's say we want another version of this chair, but in orange. Let's double click the material to open it in the material editor and we'll save as and make a copy called orange. You can right click the material and open it in your editor or open it in the file explorer. So I'm just going to quickly open this in Photoshop and make an orange version of it. So with the orange material selected, we'll just change the texture to the orange .jpg. And back in the model doc, let's add a material group. Search for our orange material and compile it. Now, if we right click the model in SFM, it has multiple skins to choose from. If you only wanted to color the model, there are better ways to do this using tint masks, but this method is great for quickly switching skins or making props like lights look like they're on or off. But that's about it for this video. For static props, porting is fairly quick and easy. It seems complicated, but once you have a workflow figured out, this can all be done in less than five minutes or so. For more complex models like characters that need facial control, that's a little more involved and is beyond the scope of this video, so I'll try and cover that in a future video. I'll also cover porting over Source 1 models in a later video. So hopefully you found this useful. If you have anything else you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.